Hello and welcome to the Inspired Photonics training session. We specialize in providing comprehensive and innovative design tools and solutions in the high-tech field of photonics. Photonics Workbench enables you to design and test elaborate and complex fiber systems. In this session, we explore the fiber amplification capabilities of the Photonics Workbench, a very innovative and advanced fiber system design suite. Let us begin by opening an example packaged as part of your installation. This example illustrates a master oscillator power amplifier configuration with a continuous wave pump, a pulse seed source and a tulium doped fiber amplifier. A good place to start designing is the fiber amplifier where one has to take into account all relevant transitions and their characteristics energy transfers, and the waveguide effect in a time-dependent numerical approach. To model a fiber properly, one must design the spectroscopy with respect to the principal energy levels of all the dopant atoms to be found in the fiber core. The thulium dopants in consideration have four principal energy manifolds. Light and matter interactions are definable between any pair of energy levels. These include number 1. The dopant emission and absorption cross-sections for the photon transitions between energy levels. Number 2. The radiative relaxation rates whose numbers are identified in milliseconds. Number 3. The non-radiative relaxation rates. And number 4, and very importantly, at least for this particular simulation, is the cross-relaxation. A change in atomic energy levels for a dopant atom does not necessarily correspond to a creation or absorption of photons or phonons. Indeed, what does happen is that two thulium atoms interact with one another such that the result is that both their energy levels jump, still satisfying energy conservation laws. This interdopant energy transfer phenomenon is known as the cross-relaxation. Please refer to product help for more details. Let us now go back to the process flow and open up the dialog for the fiber amplifier where all these dynamic properties are defined. In the general tab, the first entry, number of manifolds, is set to 4. One must set the total number of energy levels to be considered. As you may recall from the thulium spectroscopy illustration, there are a total of 4 energy levels. The dopant emission and absorption cross-sections between any pair of energy levels can be configured in the energy levels and cross-sections tab. The pump signal at peak wavelength of 800 nanometers and the seed pulse train at peak wavelength of 1870 nanometers have strong probabilities, or cross-sections, of interacting with thulium dopants between the upper and lower energy levels, 3 to 0 and 1 to 0, respectively. Absorption and emission cross-sections can be calculated quite accurately from experiments, and manufacturers of any fiber amplifier should have the absorption and emission cross-sections for the entire spectrum readily available for you. Looking closer at the first line in the table, the first column identifies the upper energy level of 3. The second column is the lower energy level, 0, which we can call ground. The corresponding absorption and emission cross-sections for any wavelength, whether said wavelength belongs to the pump signal, seed signal, ASE, or SRS signals, is identified in the third and fourth columns. One can type in the full or relative path here. Alternatively, clicking on the button with three dots gives the option to browse to the file path of the data representing the cross-section. Do not worry too much about any particular wavelength being explicitly defined. The simulation engine will interpolate for those it needs. To configure the radiative and non-radiative relaxation rates, switch to the general tab in the dialog and click on the corresponding button with three dots. Relaxation rate is configured in the dialog 
by identifying the upper and lower energy level pair and setting the rate with unit of one per second. This rate is the sum of all rates associated with these two energy levels. For example, from the spectroscopy of thulium, it is evident that two rates need to be accounted in relaxation from energy level 3 to energy level 2, namely radiative time constants 84.8 milliseconds and non-radiative 3.1 milliseconds, which give a combined rate of 45 per second. To configure the cross-relaxation, switch to the general tab in the dialog and click on the corresponding button with three dots. Here we can define the cross-relaxation tensors, which are the instrument for defining atom-to-atom -atom interactions to the simulation engine. For the physical details, please refer to the theory section under the fiber amplifier under components in the help menu. One can design core refractive index, fiber length, core radius, inner cladding area, number of optical noise modes, numerical aperture, background signal loss, rally scattering capture factor, as well as dopant concentration. Interested in noise? No problem. Under the ASE tab, one can define the amplified spontaneous emission. Noise is defined between bounds and divided into bins with respect to the spectrum. The number of bins are defined in the first row. The boundaries are defined in the second and third rows. And finally, one can define the maximum bandwidth of each bin in the last entry. Stimulated Raman scattering is a capability of Photonics Workbench and is configurable under the SRS tab. One can choose the maximum Stokes order, the SRS gain spectrum, and more. SRS is covered in another training session. Effects from Raman scattering are outside the scope of this particular Tilium fiber amplification, as we are benchmarking against a live experiment. The fiber is to be discretized into 200 spatial steps when simulating. From experience, a good starting point is 100, and this value may need to be increased until the results converge between successor simulations. Convergence is not just a metric between two simulations, but also within one simulation where comparison of the dopant concentrations can be made between two time windows. One can set a tolerance factor so that once such a convergence occurs, the engine will skip any further calculation cycles. Of course, the fiber amplifier is just one component in a system of components. Pumping the fiber from the left facet is a CW diode laser, while signal seeding is performed also from the left facet by a pulsed diode laser. Before we get into the details of these components, let us briefly discuss the phase management framework. Every component comes equipped with a time domain that may be unique with signals coming in and out with respect to the domain settings. When multiple components coexist in the system, the phase manager framework keeps track of these details and makes sure that the data is properly communicated between components and between systems of components. This thulium fiber case study illustrates a flat network of laboratory components and all that is required here is to set a primary, the pulse diode laser, for the duration of the experiment. This means that regardless of the time domain settings for each individual component, every component in the simulation neighborhood will automatically reconfigure itself to speak the same mathematical language with respect to time and discretization. For more advanced configurations, please refer to the help menu. Recall that the pulse diode laser was selected as the primary. Let us take a closer look at this particular component. 